So I just got my hands on the Yola Box Pro. Now this is an all-in-one live streaming solution in this tiny little tablet. It's actually really impressive. I mean, the fact that right now I've got a video feed coming in and I can stream straight to YouTube with nothing plugged in, just on battery, it's actually pretty cool, not gonna lie. But I wanna dive a little deeper. I wanna have a look and to see what kind of quality we can expect out of the RTMP encoder on this box. Because ultimately this is just an Android box and obviously there's a, there's a little bit more secret sauce in there to actually make all this work. But I wanted to see what kind of quality we're gonna expect because there's a lot of great reviews out there, but I wanted to see the specifics of each bit rate, basically find out what's gonna be the best way to get the highest quality if you have the bandwidth available or if you don't have the bandwidth available, what you have to try and push for to get that uh, a good enough quality for your live stream. Now, full disclosure, Yellowbox did send this unit to me for me to review, but they're not gonna be seeing the video before it actually goes up. So I've gone through and done a whole bunch of live streams straight to YouTube from the Yola box. I went with a constant bit rate, variable bit rate, QC, and from one megabit all the way to eight. And I'm gonna leave a link down below to all those different videos so that you can have a look yourself. But let's have a look together and see what kind of quality we can expect out of this. So here's a quick rundown about how I've done this test. So obviously I had the Yola box Pro, but I had two HDMI lines going straight into it. The first one was a video assist, which is playing back Aaron Parecki's stress test video, and I'll leave a link down below how you can get your hold of that. It's a really handy little, um, a bunch of videos which you can use to stress test your live streams, your encoders, but also things like sync checks. I use it all the time, it's great. Um, and the second one was a video feed. So both of them are coming in at 30 frames uh, at 1080p. Now the reason why I didn't do any streaming other than 30 is because, well, quite frankly, YouTube is going to adjust the frame rate anyway. Because any, any live stream you do to YouTube, if you do a 24, 25, it will push it to 30. Or if you're doing a 50, it will push it to 60. YouTube can only do 30 and 60 in a live streams. And I've got a video which you can check out, um, which explains all that and shows the difference between the two because it actually does a really bad job of um, going from 25 to 30 anyway. So yeah, so that's why I've done 1080p 30 for all these tests um, because really it's the only way of sh showing what the encoder is doing rather than what YouTube's messing with it. So. Let's have a look. All right, so here's the setup. So I've got a YouTube playlist here, which has all of the live streams done. So one to eight megabit in constant bit rate. We have QC, um, which is every two, because obviously they are going up and down a bit. So, and we've also got uh, variable bit rate in every two as well. So let's jump right into the constant bit rate. Now with constant, I wanted to go through all of them because we've got, uh, well, YouTube just prefers to have constant bit rate as much as possible. Um, that is what it's on its tech specs. So we could have a look here at one megabit. Now I'm not expecting much out of this. And to be honest, it is ex about what I expected for one megabit at 1080p. Not great at all. And when we go to the face, it is just a blobbering mess. So not surprised there whatsoever. So yeah, one megabit, no good. Uh, two megabit, again, this is all con constant bit rate. Uh, definitely a lot better. Still not great, but a lot better. Uh, not getting the blocking this as we did before, um, but it is consistent there. So like if you're in a pinch and you really want to get, only can only get two megabit out, it'll work. It's not gonna look amazing, but it will work. Now looking at three megabit here, pretty similar to the two, but although once we're on the face, we actually get a bit more um, sharpness going on there. Looking at four, um, looking a little bit better there. A little bit better there, not a huge jump there. Looking at five now, again, pretty similar in that, but a bit more detail in the beard and that kind of stuff. Uh, six megabit, looking a bit better now. All right, so we're looking at seven mega, megabit now, looking pretty decent there. Not seeing as, not seeing as much bleed in the text here. Um, and that video is looking pretty good as well. And eight megabit here. All right, so those are all the constant bit rates. So look, it's about what I expected. One horrible, two plus is usable between five to eight is in, is in the sweet spot. That's about what I expected from uh, constant bit rate. Let's have a look at variable bit rate. So we'll have a look at one megabit variable. Now this will go from one megabit down. So if there's, um, uh, low, low, not much activity happening in a scene, it'll drop the, um, the bitrate down. But obviously this is still 
uh, it only got up to one, so this is still looking horrible, just like the constant bit rate. So one big one megabit variable bit rate, no good. Let's jump forward to three megabits. This be three and lower. Um, looking not bad there at all, actually. Um, actually, not getting a lot of bleed in the text here as well. So this is actually quite interesting that we're um at the lower bit rates. It actually seems to be looking a bit better on the variable ones, even though YouTube prefers constant. So let's let's keep an eye on this. Um, Sorry, no, that was three megabit QC. I kind of jumped the gun there. Uh, let's jump back to three megabit variable bit rate. Um, okay, so, yeah, so we're seeing that noise in the text here and still looking a bit blurry there. Jumping forward to um, five megabit variable. You can still see that noise and not looking too bad here as well. But yeah, it's definitely some jumpiness in terms of the um, where it gets sharp. And looking at eight megabit, which is the highest. To be honest, it's looking a little bit more blocky. Let's jump forward to compare that to the eight megabit Q um, constant. That seems to be a little bit less blocky in terms of the, the face movement there, which is quite interesting. Um, now let's jump into QC. Now QC has been an interesting one. I've actually been pretty impressed at what you get out of that. So QC seems to go above and below that um, chosen bit rate. So if you're in a place where you can only get up to a certain amount of upload, don't use QC because it will go above. And if you're running out of bandwidth, you're going to start getting into a lot of trouble here. So let's have a look at the one megabit QC. Now, already out of the out of the gate, this is actually usable at one megabit. Now, realistically, it's probably pushing a bit more, but this is actually pretty impressive considering it's the one megabit option, what we're getting out of this picture. Now, it's definitely not sharp, but for one megabit and potentially it's going up to like two or three, it's pretty impressive. Let's have a look at a uh, three megabit QC. And already like, there's actually a lot less um, bleed happening in the text here as well. Um, this is only a three megabit QC too. So really, really interesting what we're, what we're getting here. Have a look at a five megabit. Again, looking really clean. I'm actually quite shocked and impressed because again, YouTube only wants uh, constant, and this is definitely a variable, a very variable bitrate. So the fact that we're getting this kind of quality is actually really interesting. And looking at eight, which actually I saw it go up to sixteen megabit when we're um, uh, trying this out, and again, it's looking pretty good. Um, now the other thing I want to check out is frame rate and seeing what kind of um, frames we're getting up here. So let's have a look at the eight megabit QC here. So I'm gonna talk you through the frames as I jump through each frame. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, dun, 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 dun. Okay, so we're not dropping any frames, which is really good to see, because I hate seeing little micro stutters in live streams. Um, so this is the eight megabit um, QC. Let's have a look at, say, a five megabit variable. So I'll pause that here, go through each frame. Not seeing any drops there, which is what we like to see. Um, let's have a look at a five megabit constant. Seems like we're getting every frame there. Let's, let's push it way down and just see if we can break it and see if there's any drop frames happening. So this is one megabit constant. Okay, so there's a double frame happening here and there's a drop happening there. So look, it's one megabit. I'm not gonna complain about uh, having any drop frames at one. Uh, let's have a look at two, see if we get any drops at two. This is our constant bit rate as well. Um, but that's looking all good there. So it seems like it just at the one megabit is where we were losing a couple of frames here and there. But, oh no, we had a, drop, a jump frame there. Um, so that's at three megabit now. Okay, we're seeing a couple of jumps here. 
Very interesting. Now there's a potential that, um, I mean, I, I repeated the same process for each uh, stream, um, but because it is just a CPU on a tablet, that um, can very well play, play into why we might be seeing some drops here. Um, so now looking at, okay, we're seeing a couple of drop frames here on four megabit constant. And looking at five megabit constant, Okay, everything seems back to normal at five. Now that's very interesting. So it seems like four and below, we were starting to see a few drop frames in there. So let's have a look at the one megabit uh, variable. And that's all looking super smooth. And let's have a look at the one megabit QC. There you go, so we're not losing any frames there. So that's a really interesting find, which is still crazy because YouTube wants constant, but it's actually getting a better result out of variable. Now, I don't know if that's the encoder on the YOLO box, which is potentially dropping those frames, or if it's um, YouTube um, dropping it on their end. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but it is good to see that we can, with the appropriate um, data rate, get every frame through. Because I was a bit worried, because I have seen a few streams that looked like it was dropping a little bit, um, but we can see here that we can actually get the solid frame rate out. All right, so that was actually a really interesting test. I mean, I, to be honest, I went into this thinking that constant bit rate was just gonna be the king here. It was just gonna um, breeze through it and be the obvious winner, but it's actually kind of the opposite. It seems like the QC codec is actually, sorry, not codec, the, um, the data rate is actually winning here which is very curious. Um, now, when it comes to what I would use moving forward, to be honest, I'd probably be looking, if, if I have unlimited bandwidth, I'd probably be looking at eight megabit uh, QC because it'll go everything up to 16 and down to um, three pretty much. So it'll move around all, the, all that bit rate um, as it needs. Now YouTube will probably complain and similar to the ATEM encoders or the Blackmagic encoders, they are variable and YouTube will inevitably complain saying there's not enough data rate, too much data rate, whatever. Um, but from what we're actually seeing on these live streams, it actually looks pretty good. And even if I was in a pinch and trying to save a bit of data um, on a stream, I'd even look at like one megabit QC um, if I was just using a cellular connection and wanting to use as little data as possible because that'll go between, you know, point something to two or three. And yeah, look, I'm actually quite surprised. The, uh, the quality is not what I was expecting. Um, but the, the other thing that I'm really happy about is that we're not dropping frames because I hate those little micro stutters. So that's really impressive that we're seeing every frame go through, which is really nice. But yeah, look, I think that's it. So thanks for watching guys. Now this has been a really interesting video and I hope it helped you out. And if you have a yellow box yourself and you're looking for the best kind of quality, hope this helped you to be able to fit, find that out. Now I'll be doing another video soon about what I'm gonna end up using on my desk. So this is my office desk set up at home. Uh, right now I have an A10 mini, which is running the camera through it into my computer. But uh, we're gonna have a see and see if the A10 mini or the Yolo Box Pro is gonna end up on my desk as a permanent fixture. So that would be an interesting one. And I've got a few other ideas about how this can be used in uh, on, a, on a on set scenario. So say that you're shooting a uh, interview with someone and you've got someone remotely directing it and you want to be able to send them a feed. So there's actually a few different things we can use it for as well as even using it as a uh, graphics output for your ATEM or any other switcher as well. So definitely get subscribed if you're interested in those videos because I'll try and get them out as soon as I can. But thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.